I have some updates and also some grateful fors and also a few strategies for how to start painting again. Let's get started. Joe McKenzie here, your watercolor coach. Let's get caught up on what's happening. Uh, what's been happening here, well, the first thing that happened this spring is that uh, my collie, that you probably see me paint many times, she's a rough collie, so she looks a lot like Lassie, but she's tricolored. Uh, she was attacked by a coyote. And um, as the vet said, the coyote wanted her dead, no question about it. It was, when, 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 we, <laughs> when we picked her up from the vet to bring her home, I just thought, there, there's just no way this dog is gonna live. There's just no way. But she, she did and she has, and it is a miraculous thing to see. It has not broken her spirit in any way. And I wanna be clear, the coyote did not come into our fenced area. Somehow the collie got out. It's the only time the collie's ever gotten out. I suspect she was just really agitated and um, she's a two-year-old, she knows nothing. What would she know about danger? But she clearly knows now. The other really good news is that we hadn't had her groom for a really, really long time. So her fur, especially the undercoat for a collie around the neck is very, very thick. And I think that probably saved her life. So good for us being negligent on that. <laughs> <laughs> and now what we did was we reinforced the fence because yeah you know fences always need mending in many ways and then I bought a variety of coyote things and um, some of them blink some of them have a siren that a human can't hear they all run on solar power and so you really don't see them when you're in the backyard but I think um, I'm just hoping that when the coyotes walk by you know they kind of think oh that's a freaky deaky house let's keep going I really hope that's the case because I've done a lot of reading on coyotes, uh, coyotes, and it turns out that they can um, they can jump a seven foot fence no problem. And I don't even think our fence is six foot. Um, so if they really wanted to get at the dog, they could. But I think they want something else. I think they really want chickens and and smaller mammals if they can find them. But I had never considered that that could happen, and uh, and now I have to kind of get over this idea that it could happen again. So um, at first what we did was, well, we really have, we've been bringing them in early at night. So she, they don't, we don't leave them out there and we don't leave them unattended. So um, it takes a little bit more diligence on our part, but it will be worth it because I never ever want to go through that experience again. So, uh, so let's see what else happened. So that took some wind out of my sails. There's some other things that took the wind out of my sails. And so I just, you know, you can see I didn't post very much because I wasn't painting very much. But, um, but what I did do is uh, start to kind of reframe things, which is really helpful. So if there are a lot of dirty dishes in the sink, instead of you know, my attitude of, oh, there's dirty dishes in the sink, and instead say, good, it shows that eating happened and a good meal occurred. Or let's say there's laundry to be done or is being done. And as I'm folding it, instead of saying, oh, I have to fold this laundry, I've been saying, oh, clean sheets, aren't we lucky to have a bed and a house to sleep in? And when it comes to barking dogs, starting to get into a frenzy about something instead of getting kind of agitated with, oh gosh, I wish they would be quiet, instead reframing it and saying, yay, we have warm, fuzzy, lovely animals to keep us company. So I'm trying to reframe like all the time uh, just to keep my head in a positive place because usually that's what painting does for me. And when painting was kind of taken away, I couldn't, you know, it's really harder to stay in that really positive headspace. Now, when it comes to painting, um, especially, you know, we've talked about this so many times when you take a break from painting, and I know everyone who takes a break from painting says this, they say, I'm never gonna paint again. Not in an agitated or, or like a, an angry kind of way, just, you know, if you go through something that uh, really, as I said, takes the wind out of your sails, you just don't have the extra bandwidth for creativity. And so days would go by, I'd look inside this, this studio and think, oh, I should paint. And I'd think, I don't even remember how to do it. I, I don't even know if I can do it. Um, so the only way back into it is to kind of clumsily stumble back into it. And of course it does not go well at all. Um, so, but it did go well in terms of that I felt really good while I was doing the activity. And I really, really honestly, probably for the first time in my life, did not care about the outcome. And then I decided to get more serious about it and said, okay, since you've forgotten how to paint, <laughs> uh, let's simplify things. And so I simplified as much as I could, just a single glass object 
on a table and then another single glass object on the table because I just couldn't handle the complexity of anything. And I also couldn't sustain longer than say a 40 minute painting. And that would be like 20 minutes and then take a break and then come back in for 20 minutes. And I don't know when I'm gonna uh, be able to tackle a larger piece. Uh, it seems impossible, but as I've seen, it, you, you, do, you can come back. So I'm, I'm hoping this summer that I do get some, some bigger work done. But I, I also realize you know, it really doesn't matter. What really matters is just being kind of um, centered and balanced and, and grateful for the most part. <laughs> And I really, really am glad to have painting back. Yesterday was the first day that I painted something. And you can look at that video. I have it on my YouTube channel about simplifying a peony. And I've done videos about simplifying peonies before, but I think this might be my most efficient effort at doing it and showing it. And it really felt for the first time like my brain was connecting with what I've learned in the past. And I really felt in it completely in it, not struggling to be in it, but definitely in it. So I hope I'm back. Oh boy, I hope I'm back. How many times have I said that? Probably a bunch of times, but I think it's just, life is just a series of getting backs, right? Get back, get back, get back, you know, fall down, pick yourself up and, and start again. So, um, oh, the other thing that I did during this time was I did go back to some pet friends. Now, <laughs> I used to paint a lot of pet friends and then I stopped and uh but this time i just did it um why did i do it i don't really remember it oh i remember why i would started doing it because that was originally why i had started painting and i felt like the um dogs and the cats and animals really taught me how to paint so i felt an affinity toward them and i thought wow except for your own animals you really haven't painted any animals for a long time and it's it's so much fun because i I always feel after I've painted a, a pet that they're kind of my pet in a way. I remember all the pet friends I've ever painted. Um, so it was fun to get back to that. And now it's, I'll, I'll still do some of that from time to time. And, and people send me photos on Facebook. And if, if one really grabs me, I'll, I'll, I'll paint it. <laughs> because I, I kind of, I can't resist those, those faces and noses. So that's what's been happening for me. And I want to give a special shout out to Karen H. You know who you are. You have hung in there with me from the very beginning. And um, I don't think I can express how thankful I am for that. It's, um, yeah, you know, all I can say is thank you. And, uh, and your painting is going really well. I'm really glad to see that. So remember to keep the white sheet paper white, your paint's wet, mask for value, mix for color. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.